Welcome to Dub Nation, rugby fans. I am Jared Banks, a.k.a. Banksy, flying solo for the show today. Utah goes into Chicago, upsets the home opener for the Hounds. We've got two literally and figuratively gigantic guests for you on the show today in USA Eagle David Anu and ex-All Black Charlie Fatmuina on the show. And uh, a whole lot more. We'll recap the action for the week and look ahead. Warriors on a bye this week. So no game this weekend to look forward to. Let's get right into it. Reaction from the game in Chicago. Plug that into the AI system and this is what you get. Warriors defeat the Chicago Hounds. And what is it? Put them on a leash, baby, in the Windy City. I like the way that looks. That's a good, that may be one of the best AI warrior images that they've spit out yet. The great day. Now, giving giving Chicago some credit, at least they made it a good looking dog, right? And shout out to the social media department for throwing up this one right, right here. Lose to Chicago or draw 25? You know what we're doing, Uno fans. Okay, family night in Utah. We're going to pull this up. Great meme. From the Utah Warriors department, yeah, we're drawing 25 out on that. Keep all your draw fours and stack them up. How do you like them apples, all right? We are live on the Utah Warriors Facebook page, Twitter, YouTube accounts. Subscribe to the podcast version on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get the uh, audio from Spotify, SoundCloud, or more. And you can, of course, listen to the show rebroadcast on ESPN 700 here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Run down the show real quick. All right, here's what we got. We'll recap Chicago. We'll talk with Charlie Fabuina, the former All Black and now the prop at Stade Toulousain as part of our partnership with that incredible club. Uh, we'll talk to Eagle, who also plays with Charlie there in France. Recap round three, preview round four, and get to all of the goodness for you. So let's jump right in. Chicago, home opener, only their second game ever in expansion team history, and they have to take on the Utah Warriors. Both these teams looking for a little bit of form. Chicago didn't look great in their first hit out. Utah coming in at one and one and looking for that big second win. Uh, of course, the final here, we know how this one turns out. It's a big dub for the Warriors, but it didn't look that way from the beginning. In the sixth minute, started out with a Luke Cardi penalty goal that had Chicago go up 3-0. Both the teams really shaky. A lot of knock-ons in this game. Go to the eighth minute, and uh, Hugh Roach, the Hounds hooker, got hurt. Lindsay Stevens subs in. Stevens actually played really well in his substitution minutes and uh, hope that Hugh Roach is better quickly and then to the 30th minute this was big for the hounds in the 30th minute caleb strum scoring a huge try and the conversion was good this was the build up off of uh quite a long set piece the warriors playing with their backs to the wall and the little uh flick to the outside julian dominguez was absolutely incredible in this game and then it's just a quick shuffle pass and a bit of space on the outside. Strum dots it down for the first try in Chicago Hounds history. And that's about the last of the good news for the Hounds because that's where the scoring would stop. 34th minute, advantage is being played. And Lance Williams to Joe Mono. It was forward, but they had the advantage. Uh, and it was, it was forward by the narrowest of margins. Mono going away. Will he make... His 10th try in 10 games. I got some good news for you coming up, all right? In the 36-minute line-out mall, Henry Bell on debut, the Kiwi for the Utah Warriors, the hooker, making some magic happen, all right? Off the back of the mall, classic technique as you see the, the work being put in by the forward pack. 34th minute, or excuse me, 36-minute Warriors score. Conversion is good. That makes it 10-7. And then in the 40th minute, it is the... Hounds knocking on the door again. Lance Williams gets a break, a uh, yellow card for an infringement at the breakdown. I believe it was for uh, repeated infringements and not supporting his own weight at the breakdown. A pretty harsh penalty in that situation, but sent to the bin for 10. And uh, it was worth it, though, because it ended up being a pretty huge goal line stop that kept the Hounds out of the try zone. Halftime, a lot of substitution minutes came in. Uh, Cliven Lobster was on the field for about 90 seconds before he was thrown to the ground and left with an apparent rib injury. And the back line had to shuffle around in a pretty significant way after that with Mika Cruze coming off the wing and dropping back to the fullback position. But it wasn't for naught because Mika made his presence felt in the 53rd minute. 
Did we talk about Joe Mono scoring a try? Because we need to talk about Joe Mono scoring a try. His 10th in end end game. Look at this. And he does well. On this ball going sideline to sideline. Ball comes out on the crash ball to Havili. And then it's uh, McLeod, Hodgson, and then Mika Cruze right in the gap here. Inserts himself in, draws one defender, keeps the defense in, and then Joe Mono, pure pace down the sideline. And Warriors, we could get used to seeing this a lot more. Joe Mono doing what Joe Mono does. Absolute butter for the kid with the sweet feet there and the score and that would be the difference maker in the game in the 70th minute a little bit of drama emerson Pryor sent to the bin for a dangerous tackle uh he lowered his head and was just trying to make the low chop tackle his arms were in it but anytime you look down in contact like that and expose your head and neck it's going to be a dangerous tackle so he was sent to the bin warriors forced for 20 minutes in this match to play a man down and gritted it out able to come away with the big win in Chicago. So let's recap it here. Uh, some stats for you. Tries, Chicago won in their opener. Utah, two. Conversions, one for one. Hodgson good with the boot, making both of them. Just the one penalty goal. Warriors still have not attempted a penalty kick this season through three games and now the bye week. The lineouts for Utah looked great, 10 for 10, and I thought it was really impressive the way they challenged at the lineout in this game, just 9 for 12 for uh chicago and then again eight for eight for the warriors from the scrum so the set piece looking really good a lot of platform to build on uh some individual performances of nope paul Lasique, 12 big carries 81 meters 22 tackles made in this game mika cruz a seven carries for 69 meters and made them count when it mattered most for the utah warriors tommy tuaval making a huge difference in his first start of the season. 10 carries, 45 meters. He ran straight and ran it hard. And uh, Paul Mullen with uh, 17 tackles, first and second, and breakdown arrivals. The big tight head busy this game, and they needed it. They needed the physicality and the leadership from all four of those veterans and got it. So in the first ever meeting with Chicago, as we look back on it, trailed 10-0, came back to win in a gritty performance. Mono, 10 tries in 10 games. This was Henry Bell's. First cap for the Utah Warriors. The Kiwi took a bit of time getting to the Warriors, but made his presence felt. So congratulations to him with his first cap and a try on debut. And then uh, Joel Hodgson, five for five on conversions. That signature trot of his on all of those kicks, a sight the Warriors fans can get used to. Uh, and finally, kudos here. The MLR released their first 15 of the week and three Utah Warriors make the cut this week. Franco Vandenberg at loose head prop and rebel at uh, hooker. And then Bailey Wilson, captain, getting the nod, full pull from the cap at six and a fantastic performance switching to the blind, uh, the blind side flanker position where he normally plays open side. So still trying to figure out the consistency and continuity there in the forward pack, but those three getting it done. So a big congratulations to the Utah Warriors and a massive win in Chicago playing spoiler. So if you are ready to see these Warriors in action, it's time to get your tickets. The next home game, March 25th, the visiting Toronto Arrows. Come to Zions Bank Stadium, be part of the best home field advantage in all of Major League Rugby. Go to warriorsrugby.com. Single game tickets are available now, March 25th, the next home game, when you can see your Warriors in action. All right, let's get right to it. The man, the myth, the legend, as part of our partnership with Stade Toulouse, Charlie Fabuina, the former All Black, now playing with Stade Toulouse at Prop, joins us from the Warriors facility. Kia ora, Charlie. How are you, bud? Yeah, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in. Uh, so what specifically brings you to the States in this visit to the Warriors? Yeah, I think, like, uh, as you were saying, the partnership between the two clubs, uh, just so, uh, I guess just to work alongside each other. So uh, uh, two of the days, but it's, uh, it's a start, so exciting times. So a super unique partnership, obviously, between uh, Toulouse and the Warriors. Uh, have you seen this before in rugby with these partnerships going internationally? Um, you hear about it, but I, I don't think to the extent where we're actually starting to to bring people over to to make connections and uh, to actually really get together, which is uh, which is exciting for uh, both clubs. So France is a long way from Papatoi, bro. Uh, <laughs> what's it like playing in France as opposed to playing in New Zealand? And what what's the biggest difference that you've noticed? 
Yeah, I think it's uh, very different, like very different rugby, but it's uh, I think it's just the size. Like in, in France, it's a lot. There's a lot of big men in France that are playing in the top 14, whereas uh, New Zealand, in general, it's a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more faster. It's quick, play the ball, good skills. But uh, France is a lot more set piece focused. So that's probably the biggest difference. I see a lot of combinations of both of those styles in the way the American brand of rugby is developing. How is that being received with the the MLR on display internationally? What's the perception of it? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, it's like uh, it's early days. Like uh, you're starting to get a lot of interest from uh, players from uh, France and Europe who are looking into uh, looking into MLR rugby and uh, potentially moving here to have a go at it. Like it's. It's definitely on the way up, and uh, people are really excited to see how uh, this competition goes. So not just the chance to travel and see a bit of the States, but, you know, play a bit of footy here, always a good thing, uh, yeah. you know, to see the game grow. The perception of the sleeping giant of American rugby. Uh, are we going to see you back here for the World Cup when we host it in 2031? Yeah, well, man, it'll be, it'll be awesome to be part of that, like, uh, to be here and involved. It's, uh, it's a great country to come and, uh, to come and see, so hopefully. We just have to call cousin Robbie and, uh, you know, you can, you can <laughs> crash on the couch at his house, right? <laughs> so your, your resume is long and storied. I've, I've been a fan personally for a long time as a kid growing up in West Auckland. We went to the first super rugby games at Eden Park, watched the first super final standing on the terraces with Michael Jones and Fitzy and, and all of those guys, you got a chance for me, as I kind of came back to the game of rugby, you were one of those guys that I really looked at as this new generation of prop taking over and carrying the banner. The first real like mobile, versatile front rowers that we had, you know, started kind of with Kevin Mialamu at, 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 the, at the hook spot. And then, you know, guys like you came in. Pat Lamb, who was your coach in, was it 2010? Yeah. Gave you a compliment. He said you had <laughs> dancer's feet. Yeah, man. Uh, I think, like uh, as you were saying, and uh, you you watch the the blues of uh, when you had Carlos Spencer and all those boys. And I think when you're a young boy growing up, you you just want to play like one of the backs. So I think a lot of the boys uh, always wanted to be the ten. Obviously, the size is not quite the same, but uh, you learn a lot of those skills, or you practice a lot of those skills when you're young. So uh, I think it just. You know, like having Kevin there, and he's he was probably the the OG of a mobile, skillful front rower. So having him there and uh, leading the way for us boys coming through was, uh, you know, it was uh, awesome. And clearly paid off. You know, you worked your way into the squad. You actually started playing league, right? You didn't come to to the proper code of the game until a little bit later, right? Yeah, yeah, I played. Uh, I played league up to maybe about. 15, 16. Uh, my school team uh, had, a, had a rugby team there and uh, they said they were going to go to South Africa. So that's what uh, changed my lives. I don't think it was a very hard, uh, it was a very hard decision, but it was, uh, yeah, that's how it came about. Getting to go on tour is a big appeal. That's awesome. So uh, now flash forward, well, I guess flash back, but flash forward from there, growing up, playing, playing for the Blues. Now you work your way in 2015 onto the World Cup squad and chance for the first time ever for any country to go back to back as World Cup champs. What are your memories from that World Cup and the build up to it? Yeah. Yeah, I think like that all black team that was that I was a part of, I started playing in 2012 and it was like we had a lot of success uh, coming uh, into that tournament, you know, a lot of confidence. But uh, I, I think they always went past Oh, they always went back to the past and just uh, to make sure like this tournament isn't like anyone can just turn up and knock someone over. And I think uh, one of the big upsets on the game when South Africa lost to Japan, like, and it happened all that. And then uh, the boys uh, made sure that uh, we weren't going to be one of those teams that got knocked off. So uh, we had a good uh, build up towards the the final, and then oh, man, it was just. It was just a dream ride for us uh, coming through. It was a few tough games in the in the playoffs, but the boys got it done in the end. So, I'm so obviously, with... obviously the the rivalry between the French and the Kiwis pretty legendary when it comes to rugby. You ever get on the banter with any of the guys in France there about it? 
Yeah, oh man, they're, they're, they're the ones that got the last laugh now. They're, they're probably uh, one of the better teams in the world rugby after they beat us at home. So, <laughs> look at that footage. Oh, love to see it. Rumble, young man, rumble. Just give the boy the ball and let's some just that's just some schoolyard run it straight. So, <laughs> look at the the man Jerome Kainer as well making an appearance. Shout out to the Oos. So. Yeah. The hands and just the straightforward contact. God, bring back some memories there, bud. Yeah, it's a long time ago, that. So, uh, yeah, it's been. Uh, you missed the ABs, but uh, my time with them was, well, was done. I was uh, happy with what I did with New Jersey, and it was just time to move on to France. So, yeah. So, cruising through your Instagram, you guys have put a lot of travel time in with the family there. I see you've got the whole lying over there in, in Europe with you. You've been to Rome. You've been all over France. What's the favorite thing you've been able to see and kind of write home about? Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's lots of things. Europe is awesome, man. Come summertime, it's, uh, especially when you're based there, it's just, everything's just a drive away. So, it's just uh, real convenient. But I think, you know, like Rome and Italy holds a special place in our hearts and like just all the history that's there and you see all the movies and you actually get to go to Colosseum and all the other attractions there it's uh it's a magical place yeah. I've always wanted to stand in the middle of the Colosseum and do the whole Russell Crowe thing you know my name is Decimus Maximus Meridius <laughs> leader of the armies of the north you're like I want that moment you know <laughs> So what other of your plans do you have while you're here in the States as part of this partnership with Stade to Luzon? Yeah, it's just mostly uh, just a bit, of, a bit of coaching with some of the younger teams and just visiting other, uh, some of the colleges and just uh, uh, just giving, I guess, the same kind of thing here, just uh, sharing our experience of rugby and how, uh, how far it can take you around the world. So uh, uh, it's just more just uh, giving insight to rugby and how much it can... Uh, change people's lives if you uh if you go all in brother i absolutely love it continuing the culture and giving back to the game that's given you and us so much thank you for all the great memories i've cheered you on from the sidelines for years and and uh and appreciate you being here and taking some of your time out to be with us on dub nation brother no worries man thanks for having me and uh, all the best Former All Black and now prop with Stade to Luzon, Charlie Fabuina. If you want to go hang out with Charlie, Charlie and our next guest, David, I know will uh, both be at Redemption Bar and Grill. There is a special meet and greet that's been set up by the Utah Warriors. You can hang out March 10th, 1 p.m. Both of these guys will be there signing autographs, meeting with fans, sponsored by the Rugby Alliance, of course, with your Utah Warriors and start to lose on so 1 p.m redemption bar and grill in harriman it's just a half block away from the stadium in harriman where you come and see these warriors play at zions bank stadium so super easy to get to and uh, bring everybody down enjoy some of the good food and meet charlie and david so speak his name and he appears let's get into it now usa eagle and fellow start to lose on front rower David Ainu, the uh, kid originally from American Samoa, spent his club days and early professional days in the great state of Washington. He joins us now. David, how are you, brother? Happy to be here. Happy to, happy to have a chat with you guys. So uh, excited to be back in the States. I mean, France is a long way away from rural Washington. Hey, being able to speak English is always nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, so, it's been amazing. What do you love most about being in France and playing along with guys of the the caliber that you have there at Stade Toulouse? I think I think just just that the the caliber of players that are there, like you know, like Charlie, you know, Charlie Famuina, you know, Jerome Cano, and even even French boys as well, like Roman Intimac, Antoine Dupont. Like being able to wake up every day, go to training, and just see the the amount of skill and finesse and just just IQ that they have, you know, in training and, you know, eventually put on the field. It's, it's honestly, it's in and of itself, it's something that I, I could have never imagined myself doing or even being a part of. And, and to say that I wear the same jersey and I, and I play alongside, you know, a lot of those guys. I want a big rivalry win against uh, racing just a few days ago as well. That was a bit of a barn burner. How was that match? Man, honestly, being on the field, um, 
it, it was it was up and down. Like you, you, one minute we felt like we, you know, the game was settled for us. The next minute we we're on our five trying to defend, you know, the game for us. So, yeah, no, that 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 game had a, had a lot of emotions, and it, it definitely was uh, one of the few games that I've played uh, this year that uh, yeah, it had me uh, had me on edge the whole time. I mean, and the French do it so well. It really kind of had like a grand final feel to it. And it was just a league match. Yeah, and that's that's what we were, you know, after after the game, we were just in the changing room. We, you know, we just sat there. I, I sat right next to, to Piazza Malvaca and we were just sitting there. We're like, you know, this this game was, like, if this was a final, if you told someone and they didn't know the context of the match that this was a final, I, I would have believed them. Like, it was, it had everything that, uh, a final game, you know, for a championship, uh, you know, entails. So what do you miss most from home that, uh, that you don't have in France while you're away? Where do I start? Um, anything that's 24 hours, uh, would, <laughs> would that be a, a superstore, you know, a good old 7-Eleven, um, a Walmart, that's that's open on a Sunday, um, yeah. Just I, I think for me now, like that's that's probably the one thing. You know, I'm I'm a pretty I'm someone that forgets a lot of things. You know, whether it be like home stuff or you know I need to pick something up. Like the 24 hours since I've been here, I've, I've saved my life on a lot of things. <laughs> so if that was if that could be a French thing, I would be more than happy, and more than blessed to be going to those places regularly. At least one in every town, right? Just so that you one, can get man. to it. Yeah, just one. Doesn't have to be big. Just something that's open at every hour of the day, like here in the states. And for for Americans, we take that so for granted because just about everything is open late, if not twenty four oh, hours. Man, like, it, like having to live in France now, I've definitely had to be more intentional of the way that I go about my week. Just because, yeah, nothing, you know. It, it's either it doesn't it's it's not open 24 hours or it closes half of the day and then it's open towards the end, later half of the day and it's like when it's closed that's the actual time you really wanted to go so you know at that point it's kind of pointless even going <laughs> <laughs> so adjustments all over the place we'll get your fill while you're here man and, uh, and get whatever you need and if you forget something give us a call we'll get we'll get it right out and ship to you right <laughs> yeah, i'll send you my address real quick <laughs> Send send you the send you the care package full of twink exactly. stuff from home that you miss, bro. Oh, right. <laughs> so you actually got a chance to go on tour, obviously a lot earlier in this year with uh, a lot of the boys that we have here on the squad uh, with mm -hmm. the USA Eagles. What do you think is, or I should say, who do you think is the most entertaining warrior to be on tour with? Hands down, Paul Mullen. One hundred percent, Paul Mullen. Like. Even even just sitting and having regular conversations with him, like the way that he talks and the way that he goes about telling stories, like I, I, I it could probably just be like a regular story that he's told millions of times. But every time I just can't can't keep a straight face like he's definitely a character. And I think at some points he doesn't try to like be funny. I think it's just <laughs> how his personality is and who he is. Yeah. Paul, Paul, for sure. Paul, big Paul, he's my <laughs> my vote on that one. Fantastic. We absolutely love having Paul here and part of this franchise. And I'm sure many of the fans will say the same thing as you with their interactions with him. Uh, how is he? As, I mean, I know you've gotten a lot of time to to spend with him on that front row as kind of a rugby player and mentor. How is it having somebody with his kind of experience able to kind of build up the next generation in prop with you now, obviously taking that next step to France? No, I, I think it's great, you know, being being teammates with Paulie, especially at an international level is because, you know, for, for the most part of our journey together, like we're, we're playing aside, you know, alongside each other, we're, you know, we're, we're playing games, we're training and, you know, we're both learning things as we're going as, as, as our international careers go. So I think for us having, you know, we spent a lot of time breaking down our position and breaking down the scrums and doing our best to, to give that information to the next generation of props coming in because it's, you know, the game as a front row is, it's, you know, it's, it's always evolving, you know, rules and stuff like that and, and how to be better. And I feel like, you know, working with Pauly every time we come into camp, like that's always our objective is to how well we can, you know, regurgitate the information that we're getting as we're playing 
but also doing it in a way that's easy to to uh, to take in as as a young player and as a young prop that's coming up and you know is fortunate enough to play on a on an international stage like that. What's some advice that you would give to young rugby players now as we look ahead to a a World Cup in the United States for both the men and women. You know, the likelihood that somebody playing rugby now will play mm. in that home World Cup, very slim, unless somebody has a very long and lasting career. The likelihood that, you know, we see somebody that's active now playing in that World Cup, maybe somebody like you, you'd be the grizzled old veteran at that point come 2031. You know, what advice would you give to the young kids now who are probably in high school ranks or younger? as they come up and try and pick up the game? I think for me, like the, the biggest advice, especially for like players that that are on the verge of whether or not sticking with rugby or, you know, going to other sports, whether it be American football or, or baseball, is just take the chance. I think, you know, it's it's easy for for American athletes here to to just look at the bigger picture, especially if it's American football. You know, everyone wants to be on the NFL. Everyone wants to make, the, you know, all those NFL teams and, you know, the contracts and stuff that come with it. You know, that's very appealing to boys um, in, in, in that level that could blind, you know, players in, you know, the reality of the situation. Um, but, you know, if, if you're a rugby player, like, just take a chance. You never know where it's going to lead you. Um, and, like, for me, that would, you know, for me, that's probably the, the the biggest thing is I didn't know where this was going to take me. And now being here, like I'm, I'm blessed and, you know, very grateful for the, for the opportunity to be playing on one of the best teams in the world. So, um, and, you know, alongside that, just, yeah, take the chance. And once you do it, give a hundred percent, if not more to, to the sport and eventually it will pay its dividends. You know, look, it's taken you to France, and and thankfully we have guys like you that these young kids can look up to, guys like our own Paul Lasique, who took that shot at the NFL and came back to the sport that he was born with, guys like even Samu Ching, who, you know, forego a career in the NFL, another Washington kid just like you, you know, that uh, that came up and, and dedicated his time to the sport. So one more last question here, and uh, and then we'll let you go, and we appreciate your time, David. Thank you so much. What do you think the USA needs to do as far as the organization as a whole to make the next step? Cause we go from missing out on a world cup to now we've got to prepare to host one. And we want to make sure as the host nation that we put on a good show, where do we fill in the gap? You know, that's, that's, you know, that's a good question. That was, that was a question I asked myself after, after we, we came back from Dubai and, you know, missing out on the qualification. Um, and it's something that I've pondered about, quite a bit and I guess the, the answer really changes every time. Um, I think for me the biggest thing is, is admitting the fact that, you know, there's something that has to change. There's something that has to be different and, and, and accept the fact that, you know, we, we need to progress somehow and how we're doing things at the moment isn't working. I, I think it's just admitting and accepting that fact and being open to, to to new things, you know, new new connections and and new uh, new ventures for for the sport and, and and for the players as well. And I I think that's why for me I'm I'm very happy about this this uh, this um, alliance with Utah because like this this is something that I feel like is is a big step in the right direction. You know, having having current players players that are still in the game and and I'm willing to come over and, and share that experience and. You know, on a club level, share, um, you know, you know, front office stuff, and, and as well as, you know, just just everything that entails of of a rugby team that's that's already uh, established and and already going about its way, like Toulouse. I think having that that partnership with Utah um, will eventually flourish and, and build into the, the community game and and better the youth sports here, and hopefully build a next generation of players where. You know, we're not having to worry about whether or not we're going to qualify for a World Cup, you know, we're, or, you know, we have to worry about this, this and that. We're, we're seen and we're, we're taken, um, you know, seriously and, and we've awakened that, you know, sleeping giant that, you know, everyone talks about, you know, that, you know, we're, we're on the world stages and we're competing, you know, we're, we're not just there to be there. You know, we're, um, we're there winning games and, and putting USA Rugby on the map that, 
um, you know, that we've all longed for or are waiting for. Beautiful answer, brother. I couldn't have scripted it better myself. Clearly, you spent I think, more time with it than I have being on the front row of it. David, I knew from Stade to Luzon and uh, and the American kid playing in France, USA Eagle. Thank you so much for your time and being here as part of the partnership with Stade to Luzon, man. I've appreciated talking with you and getting to know you just a little bit, man. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. If you want to meet with David and Charlie, don't forget there is a special meet and greet that is going down at Redemption Bar and Grill Friday, March 10th, 1 p.m. in Harriman, Utah. Both Charlie and David will be there as part of the Rugby Alliance and, of course, that incredible and exclusive partnership between the Utah Warriors and Stad Toulouse. So if you want to meet Charlie, the uh, All Black, as well as USA Eagle David, who are here with us from France as part of that partnership, Make your plans Friday, March 10th, 1 p.m. at the Redemption Bar and Grill in Harriman, right off of Mountain View Corridor next to Zions Bank Stadium. Super easy to get to and uh, and see those guys and say hi and enjoy some time rubbing elbows with uh, some other Warriors players and the front office staff coaches who I'm sure will all be there. So, all right, well, let's look back at the week that was in MLR 2023 and go through some of the uh, the. Games that happen, of course, one of the big ones, Houston asserting its early season dominance with a big, big statement win over the San Diego Legion. This one came down to the final moments as we recap the scores here. Houston 31-26 over San Diego. Of course, your Utah Warriors winning 14-10 and spoiling the home opener, the inaugural home opener for the Chicago Hounds. Uh, Nola Gold falls to rugby ATL and Dallas making it tough for the Seattle Seawolves, but the Seawolves come away with the bonus point, 35 to 10. So that is the week that was. Let's take a look at your standings in Major League Rugby. And if you look at the top of the table in the West, there they are, those Houston Sabercats at one, Seattle at two, San Diego at three. Key here, the top three teams go through in the playoffs. So it's very, very early to be talking about playoff positioning but for the utah warriors after that early loss to san diego coming back with the two big wins and being right there in the mix as we get into the meat of the season is key and then of course the chicago hounds and dallas jackals both looking for their first wins of the season looking at the eastern conference the usual suspects near the top new york city iron workers taking the one spot rugby atl in at number two the free jacks at number three Old Glory, I think, maybe surprising some people in at the number four spot. And then Toronto and Nola Gold round out the Eastern Conference. So the Warriors are off this week. It is the bye week, the first of two that we will have this season. But plenty of Major League Rugby action for you to look forward to here. Uh, coming up on Saturday, New England Free Jacks and Old Glory DC. A battle of the bottom in the East with the Chicago Hounds taking on the Toronto Arrows, and then San Diego Legion and Dallas Jackals. Dallas looking to right the ship there after that loss to Houston, and then probably the battle of the week, Seattle Seawolves and Houston Sabercats for supremacy in the West. It all comes down to that. Seattle got the home field advantage into Quilla, Washington there, and it is a good one for them. That will be an incredible game to watch Saturday night, 7 p.m. You can watch that on Root Sports Plus, AT&T Sportsnet, the Rugby Network, all the places you usually go to get your rugby. So no Utah Warriors rugby this week. If you want to get some rugby in this week, though, how about sign your kids up for the Junior Warriors programs? There's an incredible partnership coming with Salt Lake County and, of course, the Junior Warriors Rugby Clinics before every home game. Go to junior.warriorsrugby.com and sign your kid up now. They get a rugby ball. Uh, they get a rugby clinic, excuse me, with our very own Ashley Burge. You get a T-shirt. You get time spent running with players, coaches, learning about the game that they get to see their favorite heroes play at Zions Bank Stadium. It's a great connection to our youth and, as well, a chance for them to pick up and learn the game that we all know and love. So junior.warriorsrugby.com. All right. I think that's about it for us for the week. As I fly solo through this thing, uh, a big thank you to Charlie Fabuina and David Ainu, as well as Stade Toulouson for their their partnership and being our guests on the show this week. Today's show was produced by Mason Benson and Billy Ratule. On behalf of the entire team and staff, I am Jared Banks saying, go Warriors.